The U.S. approved Ericsson's six billion dollar Vonage acquisition. Um, this merger is actually expected to wrap this week ahead of its forecasted originally forecasted completion by the end of July. Um, this move by Ericsson, we believe, is a smart one. Uh, you know, expanding into into new business by way of scooping up a company that focuses on something completely different from what Ericsson does, actually. And you know, uh, Vonage was an, a pioneer in this space, but today the company is providing businesses with internet-based communication services for customer service and other use cases. And, and so, you know, I see this as a smart diversification move and um, really look forward to seeing what Ericsson is able to do here. And um, so congrats to everyone on that front. Yes, uh, that I think is uh, resonating more with uh, the audience out there, there are still some skeptics about the deal, yeah. the size of the yeah. deal, you know, over yeah, $6 it's billion. A big deal. Yes, it, it literally. And I uh, can, you know, again, it's about execution. How far can Ericsson really take uh, the Vonage assets and make it integral to enabling the service providers to right. monetize uh, the 5G networks, to make connectivity more yeah. uh, experience enhanced and so forth. And I think uh, the synergies are there. And I think I uh, it's aligning with what we just uh, already talked about is that uh, the Vonage communications platform capabilities align with uh, 5G standalone capabilities that are becoming more widespread. Uh, for example, using 5G core programmability, uh, granular policy capabilities to right. deliver, uh, for example, enhanced collaboration capabilities that are operator specific. And so uh, what the impact there is that this is allowing operators to have more value in terms of the 5G ecosystem that they're already integral to, so right. that they are not going to be as reliant on using cloud partners to get more applications out there. And this is where Vonage's expertise really comes in because uh, right. they have the APIs to allow operators to create what can be characterized as federated services. That is, it's great, you know, for right. a, say a T-Mobile or Verizon to offer this great. 5G service to say an enterprise, but that enterprise has you no know, global presence, you know, remote right. workers in Asia, branches yeah. in Europe. So how does that work? Well, you have to have these APIs that enable inter uh, carrier exchanges to deliver the innovation. So all the operators that are part, uh, partnering in this benefit. And it, uh, But what's equally important is that they're leveraging this vast community of developers. And so Vonage kind of catalyzes the ability of, of Ericsson to allow the operators to take advantage of that vast developer community to right. make these type of applications work specifically to uh, 5G networks. And uh, so uh, I think what's also important to note is that, yes, today Vonage is um, focused on connectivity and that is uh, enabling what could be characterized as over the top capabilities. Right. But uh, Ericsson does have a near term balancing act as to making sure that the Vonage capabilities are benefiting their core uh, communication service provider customer right. base. And it's not, say, a separate uh, Vonage uh, revenue stream uh, that uh, kind of leaves the operators uh, not uh, in so much in the monetization loop. Yeah. And, uh, what I think is also important is that when it comes to offering enterprises, you know, these 5G enhanced uh, services uh, such as advanced collaboration capabilities and so forth, is that aligns uh, with what we also touched on, say, SASE architectures, which we know will be important because uh, the work from home uh, transformation that's occurring, at least distributed workforce and workspaces being the dominant way for many organizations to support their workforce. And so it's not just about having an MPLS connection between the headquarters and a branch office anymore. It's about making sure that your work from home employee is not going to be a security vulnerability. So you need those granular policies that enable a work from home employer, wherever they are, to be able to go into the corporate network and uh, using you know, 5G capabilities and having all these built-in security assurances and so forth. So this is lining up, I think, overall to really allow Ericsson uh, to enable the uh, service providers out there to become more innovative, 
to really uh, take uh, 5G monetization to another level and really, you know, make their 5G investments uh, pay off sooner. Well, and I think that so th there was nothing short about this end to our show. Um, I, I think I will wrap by saying that uh, we have had the pleasure of working with the team at Ericsson uh, over the course of the last number of years. And for, you know, the naysayers out there, um, I, I the commitment that Ericsson has to the operator ecosystem, to network monetization, to helping their customers and partners develop strategies and execute on those strategies. Um, you know, can, can Ericsson do it? Absolutely. So I, it's my opinion. I'm looking forward to great things ahead here. I think that was a super smart move on so many fronts, many of which you touched on. And um, so we'll watch and see what happens. Right. Naturally. That's yes. Naturally. This is definitely right. one that is going to be a, a game yeah. changer yeah. if everything lines up uh, yeah. according to plan. Absolutely. 